Happy Friday. This is Atlanta and Company, and I'm Christine Pallara, here to hopefully entertain you for the next half an hour, 30 minutes. Uh, we're so happy you're here. We made it through a work week, yet another work week. I know they all seem to blend together these days, but you know what? We want you to sit back, relax, have a cup of coffee, enjoy the show. We kick it off each and every day, if you are new to the show, with stories to make you smile that are all good, brought to you by this lovely lady who stays right here on the desk with me. If I can't be next to her, I'm gonna find a way to be next to her. You know what I'm talking about, everybody? It's Kara Kinnear. Good morning. With all good happiness. <laughs> good morning. Okay, before you get to yours, this is very rare. I actually have an It's All Good story for you, okay? okay. Get some background okay, music going it. for a reason. A few weeks ago, I got this letter in the mail. Kara and you have been talking about and sharing thoughts of how we could all get through these unusual times. I saw the attached Barry Manilow song and I thought of you. Maybe you would like to share it with your audience. If you go to Lyric Find, you will find it there. Until the good times come Until again. The good times come again. The, yes, sing it, Barry. It is inspiring. It is beautiful. I want you to go and download it today, Kara. But she was so sweet. She said, I know you're thinking, how does she know where you live? Well, she said, I met you at Cross Creek a while back, and you took a picture of us and put it on the show. She says, I don't do social media, so I thought I would just use the old-fashioned method to communicate. So clearly, I was like, yeah, I live right here and here. And anyway, she remembered. Thank you, and her name is Sharon Hyland. And Sharon, thank you for that. You don't know, but I have a very special place in my heart for Barry Manilow, because he asked me to sing on stage at a concert when I was 16. So you didn't even know that, Sharon. And so that's why this is meaningful. Remember that, Kara? I can't smile without no, you. This is a full circle moment. There's so many things I want to say. One, it Sharon, is. that's awesome that you hand wrote a letter. I love that. Thank you for watching the show. That is so cool. Um, two, music soothes the soul. And we all could use a little bit more music right now, I think. And I had another one, but I forgot it already. But anyway, um, that's awesome. And <laughs> Our viewers are just the best. And we're going to talk about another, another viewer in just a second. But um, let's get into some It's All Good stories, should we? Shall we? Let's do it. All right. Um, let's do it. This first story is about Crystal, who is a mother um, of five children. She's getting her nursing degree. She's very busy. But um, one of her daughters um, has severe nonverbal autism. And so if you know a child with autism, you know that routines are extremely important to those kids. And when COVID kind of upended everyone's yeah. routine, it especially affected Ashlyn's routine. And one of the things that Ashlyn really liked and knew that she was getting each and every day, and she has so many other aversions, this was comfort for her, was SpaghettiOs. So when COVID started, people Ooh. were buying up all the canned foods. Okay. Crystal could not find any SpaghettiOs. And it was really um, oh, no. was driving her nuts because she just wanted to make her daughter happy. Her daughter was expecting the SpaghettiOs. She said she tried every off-brand name. Ashlyn knew that they weren't true SpaghettiOs and did not like it. So the local paper yep. picked up the story, and the people in the community really rallied around them and started donating all of their SpaghettiOs and finding them from different stores and no. bringing them to uh, Ashlyn so she could yes. have that little bit of comfort every day. And then SpaghettiOs heard of it and actually has gifted um, Ashlyn and Crystal with a year's supply of SpaghettiOs. And I know it seems like something simple for them, but she said it has just alleviated so much stress with everything else going on. Let's not forget, she's getting her degree. Yes. She has four other children. And so to know that Ashlyn is going to be okay because she has that food that she loves so much has really just taken uh, so much stress and, and so many other things off her plate, so to speak. Not SpaghettiOs, though. Um, and then, speaking of great viewers that we have, Christine, a woman sent you an email, um, probably also a few weeks ago, named Wendy. Hi, Wendy, if you're watching. Um, and she started a blog Hi, to help people with um, children that maybe um, aren't as typical as other children. She has a son with a chronic illness that has had many diagnoses. And she started this blog called brewingmorehope.com. I read through it. I, I spent it. a good 20 minutes on it last night, and it just felt like a 
a warm cup of coffee, which is where she got the brewing from in the brewingmorehope.com um, name. But I think it's going to be a great resources resource for other moms or family members that might be going through this. So check that out. Wendy, thank you for watching and writing in. And hopefully yes. um, that can help somebody else. But just some good resources and, and a happy ending, a happy SpaghettiO ending for our first one. <laughs> And listen, I, like you said, it may seem like a little thing, but it's not. I mean, I, for these children who, who know what they love, they're used to it, they need that normalcy. And it was a small thing to all of us, but it was a big thing in their lives. So yes, way to go. Yes. Not just the neighborhood, but all the executives at SpaghettiO, Chef Boyardee, I believe. Um, awesome, awesome. And yes, thank you for getting that in. I told uh, Wendy, uh, the viewer, we will try to make sure we, we say um, in the name of the website because we know it's so important to anyone who needs that additional help and love and support and all the resources. So I love it, Kara, you got any more? Yes, okay, let's get to this next one. Um, yes, and thank you again, Wendy. But this next one I love so much. It's about a young man named Colby. He's a junior in high school. Colby was a little worried when he knew he was going to do virtual this year because he thought, I don't really know if I have a great place to study and to concentrate. You know, so many kids right. are on the floor or at their kitchen table or wherever they can find a spot to be quiet, to listen to all their Zoom classes. So Colby, who wants to be an engineer or an architect, loves woodworking. So he got to work and made himself his own desk. He Come liked on. doing that so much and knew that there were going to be kids that didn't have a desk. He got to work. Colby put on his Facebook page that he would like to make desks for people who maybe couldn't afford them or couldn't find one. Desks have been sold out, too. If you're a mother or father that's looking for a yes. desk, a caretaker that's looking for a desk for um, somebody that's learning in your home, you might not have been able to find one. So Colby made 40 desks. He got $2,000 in donations right away. He said he got so much money. Eventually, he said, no more. I'm just trying to keep up. He's made 40 desks. He wants to make 60 more to get to his goal of 100. He's been giving them to teachers and students alike, and people couldn't be more grateful. So thank you, Colby, awesome. for putting your hard work to use. So nice. So great. Yes, I love it. Kara, this segment has just fired me up this morning. We got to hear great stories and, of course, local stories from our own viewers, and we encourage that each and every day. Kara's here every morning, so if you have one for her, all you have to do is go to facebook.com slash ATL&Co. That's what Wendy did. Or tweet us using that hashtag. It's all good.